A meta-analysis has been run on over 60 previous studies on climate change that have covered every major region of the world, and it has some amazing findings. Uh, now, this was conducted by uh, researchers at the UC Berkeley and Princeton. As I said, they looked over multiple, many dozens of studies that have been done on climate change, and what they found is, is honestly quite shocking. So, uh, the, the major finding, the major headline is that drought, flood, and high temperatures strongly correlate with spikes in conflict. And what they're talking about there is both interpersonal conflict, just between people, uh, different violence, and also intergroup conflict, things like civil wars, traditional wars, and these things can be strongly correlated with increasing heat. Now, we're gonna get to more of the details, but just straight off, uh, if you weren't worried about global climate change, if you weren't worried about the coastlines being swallowed up, uh, farming being irreparably damaged and things like that, um, maybe the extra conflict and violence could, could clue you in that we need to do something about it. And so, a bit more in depth their findings, uh, researchers noted examples including increased domestic violence in India and Australia, assaults and murders in the United States and Tanzania, ethnic violence in Europe and South Asia, land invasions in Brazil, police violence in the Netherlands, and civil conflicts throughout the tropics. And so what they're basically saying there is, at various regions throughout the world, various types of interpersonal conflict and violence can be correlated with increasing um, uh, global uh, temperatures. And of course, what's interesting is you have to bear in mind that we are actually in the high point of a many centuries long decrease in overall crime uh, and particularly violence, both interpersonal and intergroup. This is a comparatively quite safe, quite peaceful time, and yet they're finding increased violence in as disparate uh, areas as police violence and domestic violence. Um, now, uh, what they found is that higher temperatures, out of 27 modern societies studied, all 27 showed a positive relationship between higher temperatures and violence. Uh, I don't remember the exact rap song from when I was growing up, but they said um, that, that it was something about the temperature being high, and it's a good enough reason to commit violence. Apparently, that was grounded in uh, quite ahead of its time's climate science. Um, now, furthermore, they found that one standard deviation shift towards hotter conditions, and they don't make clear exactly how many temperature, how many degrees that is, uh, causes the likelihood of personal violence to rise 4% and intergroup conflicts to rise 14%. Now, maybe you can wave away 4% for the interpersonal stuff, but 14% higher? Now, I have to assume that that's probably related specifically to droughts and it causes wars over uh, water and things like that, but Look, that's what we've been predicting for a number of years now is going to happen as climate change continues, as global warming continues. Uh, these scarce resources, like water, are going to lead to conflicts at various part, uh, parts of the world. And finally, and this is perhaps the scariest finding, uh, if the study's calculations are correct, a global temperature rise of just 2 degrees Celsius could increase intergroup conflicts such as civil wars by over 50%. And as Climate Central notes, projections estimate that temperatures will make that jump by 2040. So look, we've got a few years, we've got a couple of decades, but a 50% higher chance of things like civil wars, not to mention the interpersonal crime, the domestic violence, police abuses, and things like that, by 2040. And unfortunately, I don't know that there's anything that we can do by then, because we are so behind what we need to be doing time-wise to get a handle on global climate change, and I'm starting to uh, resign myself, I guess, at this point to thinking that apparently just it getting hotter and things like that is not enough to convince people. But if things like uh, conflict, if things like uh, losing some of your favorite foods, these are various things that we report on this show and on other shows, if that's what it takes to get people to care about global warming, I'll talk about any of the negative impacts. I don't really care. We need to do something now.